In today's very, very busy world, people are using all sorts of devices that have different resolutions. You have people using desktops, laptops, tablets, and mobile phones. And basically what this means is your web page has to fit on all of these devices or people will go to another website. So you want to make sure that your web page is a one size fits all. And you can do that with CSS media queries. This is one of the very, very powerful features in CSS. And so I'm going to show you how to use that today. Now, right now I have this on a desktop and it's at max resolution. This is, uh, I think it was 964 pixels or something. But what happens if I minimize this and I start to go ahead and resize the window? Well, take a look at that. You can see here that the main content page is starting to disappear and now we just have the sidebar. Well, what we want to do is resize this appropriately when the browser is minimized, or perhaps they're looking at this on another device, perhaps a tablet. So what CSS Media Queries allows you to do is it basically allows you to resize your entire web page. You can do pretty much anything you want. You could even put up new content if you wanted. But a lot of times you're just going to be deciding which elements you want to display with this smaller pixel count. And in this case, we probably don't want to show the sidebar. You always at a minimum want to show your main content panel and so that's what we're going to do once this is displayed in a smaller resolution we're going to go ahead and eliminate the sidebar and just show the main content and again we can do that with media queries and of course this is the same web page we used in the last lecture so again what we're going to do is go ahead and get rid of the sidebar so here is the syntax for media queries you always use an at sign then media and then this actually takes arguments, and we'll get to that in a moment. And then it's just similar to other CSS rules. We need squiggly brackets. Now, inside these squiggly brackets, we place all the elements that we want to alter. But first, let's go ahead and put in our argument. Now, this is where you specify the resolution. So in this case, we're going to specify the max width property. There's other properties, and we'll talk about that in future videos. But for now, we're going to use probably the most widely used one, and that is max width. And what we're going to do is specify 600 pixels. Now, what this basically means is, is if our web page is displayed on anything less than 600 pixels, we'll go ahead and do whatever it is you tell CSS to do with inside of these squiggly brackets. And in this case, again, we want to go ahead and get rid of the sidebar. So that's what this means. Basically, this means anything less than 600 pixels, go ahead and redo the web page, whatever directive we issue. And 600 pixels actually usually is the standard size of tablets. So this will handle tablets as well as when the user minimizes the browser. So let's go ahead and put in a rule. And it's just like any other CSS rule. So we'll specify sidebar, and of course we have a class for that. So we specify dot sidebar, and then we need squiggly brackets for that, right? So let's go ahead and put that in right here. And then what we want to basically do is hide the sidebar. So what we're going to do is do display, remember that property? And we're going to set that to none. That will basically completely obliterate the uh, sidebar or get rid of it. So let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll go back to our web page. Let's refresh this. And let's go ahead and minimize this and take a look at that. It worked. Look, it's gone. And see how nicely that fits now? Very, very nice indeed. You have your main content on here and you don't have to worry about cluttering the page with elements that really aren't needed. Now we can do many other things too. You can basically do anything you want. You could add new elements if you want. We could actually move this logo. And in fact, let's do that because see how the logo didn't move? So let's actually float the logo left. And so we'll go back to CSS media queries. And let's put in a rule for that. But you know, we probably should actually give that an ID because we don't want to move all of our images. So let's go to where our logo is, which is right here. And let's just give this an ID of test one. And then let's go ahead and put in the rule for it. And of course, since this is an ID, we need the hash sign. And then we just specify our ID, which of course is test one. And what we're gonna do is just float this left now. And you take a look at this. We're keeping all of these rules inside of our main media query rule. So let's go ahead and save this. And you know what? I need to actually save the index HTML as well because we put in an ID right here. There we go. And let's go ahead and refresh our web page and let's see if this works now. Take a look at that. It moved left and our sidebar, of course, is gone and everything is working. So that is how media queries works. Okay, as always, thanks for watching.